Hello pilots and welcome to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are going to be talking about how to make your trim as easy as possible in any aircraft in both 2020 and 2024. Stick around. If you are interested in any of my tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, pilots, so you heard me right. Today, we're going to be talking about how to make trim just about as easily as humanly possible. Uh, this is an incredibly sick software that I happened to stumble across. And uh, while looking for other trim options, I was actually searching for trim hardware and came across this software and wasn't sure what it was. And lo and behold, I'm pretty blown away by it. So we're going to be talking about uh, what it does, what its functionality is, how to best use it, why I use it now, uh, why I'm going to be sticking to it, even over the use of SPAD.next, uh, which you guys know if you've been watching my channel, I'm a huge proponent of, even despite the poor customer service um, and the fact of the lack of people skills. Um, but anyway, so this thing is slick. It can do two things. We're going to be talking about one of them today, but it can do two things, essentially, that I'm aware of so far. I've only been playing around with it for a couple of days, and the more I played with it, I'm like, yeah, i got to show this. So it can obviously control your trim, but it can do it both on a digital or an analog ax uh, axis, and it can also do it on both a button or an axis. So let's go ahead and talk about how this all works because it is pretty freaking slick. So first off, you guys can see I've got a bunch of different controls. It picks up everything that you have plugged in. Uh, we're going to start. We're working at the desk today. So we have my Win Wing Orion, and we also have the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. So obviously, let's start with the Bravo. You can see you have all of your different access assignments here, all the different buttons that are currently available. Anything that's orange is currently active and lit up, right? It's not configured in here. It just means that the on switch is on, right? So... You have your taxi function and you have your trim function. In short, what the taxi does is allows you to use your yoke or flight stick to actually steer the aircraft while on the ground. So this is very helpful for people who don't have rudder pedals, okay? Once you're airborne, it will disengage itself and it automatically behaves as it normally should. So even if you don't have a twist grip uh, or anything like that, you have the ability to taxi on the ground with your flight controls. So this is actually a really handy tool. And it automatically detects when the wheels are down. So as soon as the wheels are off the ground, it stops. As soon as they touch back down, that functionality returns and you can control the aircraft with the nose wheel. But we're not going to be showcasing that today, but I did want you to understand what that does. Really, really slick. Um, I played around with it a little bit. Again, I will never recommend something like this over rudder pedals, but I would recommend something like this probably over a twist grip. I think twist grips are really imprecise. I, I don't know that using your stick would be any better, but you know, what the hell, it's worth a shot. So anyway, now let's talk about the trim. So obviously with the Bravo, we're going to be using the trim wheel. So you have 22 is going to be nose down. So this is an analog signal and you have 23 for a nose up. So let's just set it. Here's where this really shines. Let me get I got another window in my way. Let me get that out of my way. And let me get OBS out of the way of my simulator because I can't see. There we go. So as long as you guys... Okay, good. You guys can still see that. Good. All right. So here's how this is going to work. So first, we're going to set nose down. So 22. So here you have a value that you can set. Now, notice that you have limits. You have 0004 positive or negative. And negative is going to be nose down. Positive, obviously, nose up. And you can set anything within this range or even outside of that range. The lesser the number, the less the action. So we're going to start with the lowest setting that they've recommended here. And we're just going to enter in a negative. Oh, here we go. Negative 0 0.1, 2, 3, and 4. And that's it. We're just going to hit OK. Now, oh, and it tells you what you did. OK, cool. Now, rotating the wheel, you can see what the movement is. Now, if we make this a larger number... So example, if we make that a one, it should move incredibly quickly. Okay, you can see that motion has now increased. Watch the trim indicator here. Okay, right here. 
And you can really set this to whatever you wanted. So again, we could if we make that a five. And look at that, okay? So really, really slick tool. There really isn't a whole lot to this. You wanna change that value, you simply go in. If it's going too fast for you, going too slow for you, whatever it is, change it to what you want. I think I'm gonna kick that at zero, zero, 001 is what I tend to like. I like a little bit of action, but again, now let's set the nose wheel or the trim up. So in this case, it's just gonna be a positive number. So 0 0.001, keep that same flow on the way back. There we go. Now as an example, we'll also use an axis. Just so I can show you guys, let's get that centered. There we go. So now let's find an axis. Uh, let's use this one. So here we go. And this is, this is well, actually here. This is actually my mixture axis at the moment, but for demonstration purposes, what the hell. Set that to trim. Wham! Instantly. And you can just like anything else, pull that back. Now that's obviously going to limit the range though. So you have to think about that though if you're gonna be using an axis. If you're gonna set this to anything less than one, then you are not going to get the full action of the trim wheel. So very, very slick. And if you wanted to reverse it, obviously you'd simply click the reverse button and it would go the opposite direction. In our case, I think I set that too far. That was my fault. So actually, that's a break. There it goes. <laughs> I was like, I can hear it moving, but that was a graphical failure on the sim. I was like, what's going on there? But I can still hear it. Anyway, I don't want to use an axis. That's not my kind of thing. Now, let's real quick, I'm going to show you guys the joystick too, just so you can see how simple this really is to set up, dude. I mean, I'm really blown away by this. So a trim hat, right? I'm gonna use just a, a POV hat. And let's again set this to negative uh, 0.004. And we should see the exact same behavior we saw before. So if I tap it, okay? And if I hold it, and again, you guys know how much of a big proponent I am of SPAD. SPAD is not this simple. In SPAD, you have to set a push and then you have to set a hold. So you have to do two different actions for the same button. You can still set the value, which is why I prefer SPAD, is that you still have to set the value. You still have to tell it you know, what range you want it to adjust to. But even editing the trim wheel in SPAD or the trim action in SPAD is, is more difficult. You have to find the button, then you have to select the action, then you have to open up the configuration, then you change the value, hope that's what you want and come back and do it again. So again, this is very, very simple, very, very easy to use. Uh, 0 0.001 is what I was using. There we go. And I like that they turn green, indicating that uh, that button is mapped. So very, very easy to operate, very, very fast, very, very efficient, and extremely lightweight. Now, the other thing, there's one more thing that this thing does that I want you guys to be aware of, and this is a real quick explanation. We have all felt it on two separate occasions. Um, one of the things that it does is it equalizes the trim on takeoff and on the disengage of autopilot. Now, what I mean by equalize, I guess synchronize would be more effective. It synchronizes your controls to the trim uh, at both takeoff and when the autopilot is disconnected. Okay, we've all had that issue where you disconnect the autopilot and the plane just jumps, either either dives real quick or it pulls up real fast. Same thing once the... Once the uh, Aircraft switches from ground mode to flight mode. That that it's an actual segmentation of the simulation experience. It's it's a protocol with inside the software. So once we switch from ground mode to the software part of flight mode, you guys have probably all felt it where you're playing jolts and it acts ridiculous for a split second as the trim catches up, and you usually have to re-trim it. You have to grab your yoke, your flight stick, whatever it may be, make some sort of drastic action. This prevents that. Okay, now we're not airborne. I'm not going to show that particular piece today. You guys should take my word for it. It's a freeware software. That's the beautiful thing about this. It's completely free. A link to this will be down in the description below. I donated to it because it's so simple and so light and so easy to use uh, that it was just worth it to me. It was just absolutely worth it to me. Um, I, I'm... It, 
and trim is probably one of the more is one I think it's one of the more overlooked underperforming and over frustrating parts of these two simulators 2020 and 24 uh, setting them and getting them tweaked the way you like is a pain in the butt in my personal opinion okay so this is one it just it just works like you don't have to do anything and then if you want to change it simple click you change the value hit okay and you're done like there's there's nothing else so and then finally obviously you have all of your different controls you can set as you guys just saw i can set trim up on multiple controls so for someone like me who you know i have the big cockpit behind me you guys have all seen on the show here and then i've got my workstation here at the desk where i do a lot of my testing and then the guides and things like that and run my reviews um so it's very easy to just set it and you don't have to worry about it i'm really kind of hoping <laughs> i'd like to see him take this software and 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 make it the full shebang i i mean i this could be a spad killer if, if he kept going with it but either way very very grateful um and i wanted to share that with you guys i think this is a fantastic piece of software a link to this as always will be down in the description it works with helicopters too by the way um i have well Okay, so there's always the potential that it may not work for helicopters. It depends on how it's coded. Um, but thus far, I have tried three different helicopters with inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, and it works just fine. Um, so keep that in mind. But uh, anyway, quick video. Hope you guys appreciate that. Um, linking to it again down in the description below. Donate if you can. And then finally, last thing I'm going to say, guys, is that if you uh, have a chance, check out uh, my Patreon change. Um, you no longer have to subscribe if you want to purchase any of the guides. You can now buy each guide individually without a subscription. Yes, it takes you to the Patreon site, but a subscription to the site is no longer required. Uh, still a cheaper way to go. Knock, knock. Here you go. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But that's it. As always, guys, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.